five o'clock, Evan comes in our bedroom crying, his head hurt. So Alex, my husband, took him to the local emergency room. Evan got a CAT scan. There was no radiologist there, and my husband happens to be a radiologist. So Alex, Alex had to read the CAT scan, and it showed a very large tumor, about a four centimeter tumor in his brain. Alex and I were frantically trying to find the best treatment, the best protocol anywhere in the world. We found it at St. Jude. We began a 10-month journey in Memphis. He ended up having a second neurosurgery about a week before Christmas. He had 31 radiation treatments, four high-dose chemotherapy treatments, followed by stem cell transfer. They had harvested his own stem cells prior to beginning radiation. I was upset. He started to lose his hair. That's, it, it was much harder for me than it was for Evan. He was very stoic and brave about the whole thing, and I was, it, it just upset me a lot. So I was flying back on a plane, I was visibly upset. I was sitting next to this complete stranger who asked me what was wrong, and I started talking to her. I said, oh, I just left my um, five-year-old son in Memphis, my husband's there, he's you know losing his hair, he's not eating. She said, I work at Fort Leavenworth, and I mentioned that Evan loves Army guys and had since from a very young age. And she said, how about I have some of the guys I work with send him a couple notes? Well, within 24 hours, he started getting notes. You need to be Army strong. You, you need to eat, Evan. And it spread from the Army to the Navy to the Marines I, all over America, Afghanistan, Iraq. Literally, it was like a worldwide phenomenon. He started eating. He stunned the doctors. An amazing lady named Lita contacted us and said, hey, I'm really involved in the military, and there is a wounded warrior. He's a true national hero. He's at Walter Reed. He'd like to come and meet Evan. So Ryan shows up with Lita, and Evan was sitting in Ryan's lap within 20 seconds. It's always been tough for me to see kids that are sick or hurt. Um, you know, just never seems fair, especially Evan having cancer. But I mean, one thing that's always impressed me is how resilient and strong kids are. Um, you know, that he was sick, but at the same time, he was this lively young kid. He brought me a bray, a flag, and a coin. It was a great experience to see, you know, what it meant to him and how happy he was and just, you know, even if just for that afternoon could brighten his day, gave him a flag from our brigade, a 173rd Brigade flag, and a beret that I had, and uh, that's kind of where it all started. All of a sudden, we start hearing these noises. <laughs> I had a little thought machine thing that he helped me put together and I was like, put it under like, people's chairs at the table and I would press the button and it would make the sound so it would like they fought. He was a really strong little kid and you know, as difficult as uh, his illness was, you know, to be able to be there and, and have fun with him and play with him and uh, you know, brighten his day was really what was important. We have never laughed so hard. I and mean, it was one of our best days at St. Jude. We felt so blessed that this man, who was so grievously wounded, fighting for our country, defending his fellow soldiers, that he took time when he still was not, he was still under treatment, to come and to have another battle buddy in Evan and to encourage Evan and to make him even stronger. It meant the world to us. He was a gift from God. 